Good evening. I want to welcome you to the telecast this evening. My name is Kathy Ellis, and the name of this ministry is God's Power Surge, GPS for short, because I believe everyone needs direction in where they're going, and Jesus Christ is that direction. Now, this evening, uh, seems like here lately God's been giving me some pretty hard messages, but uh, I guess it's needed and necessary. He's trying to get the church ready, right? <laughs> so we're going to be in Romans chapter 10 and Hebrews chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles, get them ready. We'll be in Romans 10 and Hebrews 12. And the name of the message this evening is going to be disobedience and chastisement. <sighs> Sounds uh, fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, but God loves us. He loves us. And just like a good father, you know, sometimes we need corrected. You know, if you were running towards a cliff, you'd want someone to steer you away from it, would you not? Well, that's, you know, when we're in sin, we're running towards that cliff ledge, and, and God's like, come on, get back here. <laughs> get back here. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Now I want to sing a few songs for you this evening. This song uh, uh, was one of the hardest ones that he ever gave me to write. It took some time. We should just say that. And it's called Once Upon a Savior. And uh, listen to the words to it. Once upon a Savior in Bethlehem Many years ago was born new life, love, and power Humble birth among the animals. There was no rooms at the end. He would grow to do marvelous things, like heal the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. But he Once upon a Savior, His church today shows up on Sundays, but doesn't give Him any other time. Is there room for Him in your inn as He stands at the door and knocks? He said He gave us the same power to heal the sick, cast out devils, but how many times should he die for our sins? Because he already runs from the dead, victorious. He's the Savior.
and he is the savior of the world. When he was giving me that song, he said, I want people to know I am not just a story. He's a true living God. And he loves each and every one of us. So much that he came and died to be that sacrificial lamb. To pour out his blood for the remission of our sin. And what is sin? It's anything that goes against God's word. That's why we need to read it and study it and get to know him. And when you get to know him, you get to know a little bit more about yourself too. It's a wonderful journey. He's an awesome God. But you can't read the Bible without having him in your heart. You can, but you're not going to get as much out of it. Because the Bible's a spiritual book. And the only way you can read it to truly have an understanding is to have him in your heart and to have that hunger and thirst to learn more about him. And just like anyone in the natural, I know I've started jobs and you have people coming around, oh, you want to stay away from that one. She doesn't work very well or whatever. And then you come to find out they're not that way at all. That's why I always made up my own mind about people. You know, I never, you know, list, paid any attention, you know, like water on a duck's back, so to speak. Never paid too much attention what people said about people. I made my own judgments about people, or, you know, and, and I ended up finding out that once you get to know people, you get to understand them. And that's the same with God. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. <clears throat> it sure makes sense. So much so that I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. I want to tell everybody of the wonderful things that he does. And the wonderful thing he did on Calvary to save me. Save me from a sinner's hell. Because heaven's real and so isn't hell. And it's a decision. It's a decision. You either choose not to do anything with God or for God or about God or... You choose to follow him. Listen to the words of this song. I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. I want to be a soul winner for Jesus every day. He does so much for me. I want to aid the lost sinner to leave his erring way and be from bondage free. A soul to live for Christ ever and do his blessed will because he loves me so a soul winner for Jesus a soul winner for Jesus oh let me be each day a soul winner for Jesus a A starry crown, a soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus. Oh, let me be each day a soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus. He does so much for me.
does do a lot for me. And I don't serve him because he does so much for me. It's a joy. And all the things that he does for me is just perks. He doesn't have to do anything additional because he already did everything that I needed him to do on, on Calvary. He already did it all. But he loves me so much that he <laughs> is willing to look out for me and to guide me and to direct me to where I'm not down here by myself trying to serve him. Because if I did anything within myself, I would fail. Did you get that? If I would do things within myself, I would fail. It's only through Jesus. It's only through Jesus that I can bring these messages and bring light to things that people need to understand and acknowledge and to change. Because let me tell you, change is good. When you change, like at song Two Coats, take that old garment off and put on the new garment. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's an awesome feeling. It's awesome when you... When you get something new and you put it on and, and, you, and you feel like you look so nice in it, that's a good feeling. It's even better when Christ does it for you. When he takes off that old garment of sin and gives you that beautiful garment of white linen without spot or blemish, oh my, now that is awesome. And it cannot be made by man's hands nothing that man can do only Jesus I want to try to sing this old song and I may just try to sing it without playing it <laughs> um, it's called trust and obey it's a long song I probably only uh, sing a few verses of it but I like the words to it because it number one it goes along with the lesson but these old songs, if you would just go through an old hymn book and read the words to some of these old hymns, those are messages within their self, okay? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Just sing the chorus with me, if nothing else. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let us go to the Word. Now you have your Bibles. We're in Romans chapter 10 to start out with. And I want to start in verse 14. And the heading in, this, in my Bible says, Preaching to a Disobedient People. <laughs> so uh, Romans 10, starting at the 14th 
verse, it says, How then shall we call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? For it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You've heard me say that before. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. And Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that ask not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Oh, my. And we can see the world today, you know, the Gentiles, which is us, um, we're not Jewish, <laughs> um, are disobedient and gainsaying people. Disobedient and gainsaying people in the church house. As the word says, they have itching ears. They don't want to hear that they need to do better. They don't want to hear that they have to do anything because no one wants to do anything. You have a church gathering. Uh, you try to have volunteers for people to do things. Uh, you have people that, that volunteer to teach Sunday school. Is it not usually the same handful of people? And why is that? Disobedient, gain, gainsaying people. Ah, oh, someone else will do it. Here I am, Lord, send me. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> That's not always easy to do. But I want to expound a little bit on what the Lord has given me uh, this evening uh, with this. Because when we willfully go against God, we sin. And he will correct us when we do. We have people today who are looking for candidates to vote for and say, I can be a Christian and not, belie and not believe in abortion or homosexuality, but vote for the candidate that does, that upholds and supports the policies for these things. God is not pleased. <laughs> he said, do not be partakers. When you are in a getaway car of a robbery, guess what? You're found guilty with the criminal that robbed because you are with them. Is that not true? If you're in a getaway car, and even though you may not be driving a getaway car, but you're in the car and someone robbed it and the police catch you and arrest you, well, guess what? You're going to jail too. That's what it means by not being partakers with those who are upholding sinful things. Do not get caught up in sin. Do not be partakers with the world. God has set us apart for a reason, to show his glory to the world. When they look upon the church, walking upright, victorious, happy, showing love for one another, not cowering to sin, but telling how they or we are able to overcome, to give the sinner hope through the gospel of peace. We're not to browbeat people, but say, hey, you know, I was once like that. I overcame, and you know how I did? Through the blood of Jesus that covered my sin. I just said, Lord, here I am, a sinner such as I. Forgive me, Lord. And he made a change. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's what we need to tell people about the change that God can make. 
because he can only make changes. But he himself never changes because he doesn't have to. He's already holy. He's already holy. He doesn't have to change. And he says, I changeth not. Let's go to Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read 1 through 13. And it says, The author and finisher of our faith. Wherefore, seeing we also be compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh, Unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the, chast the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Endure, endure the chastening. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you. As with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If he chasteneth not you, is he a good father? No. A good father corrects his children. You don't want your children to get hurt. So you say, hey, come here, come to me. Get away from that. It's going to harm you. And that's what he says to us. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we give them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Verse 8, it says, But if we without chastisement, where of all Whereof are all partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So wherefore, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh that have corrected us. And did we not give reverence to our earthly fathers? We respected our earthly fathers. At least I did. My father's gone on to be with the Lord some time ago now, but I respected him and I loved him very much. And I still do. I'll see him again someday. But how much more? Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? God the Father is a spirit. That's why we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because he's a spirit. And that's why we have to, you know, read this Bible under the unction of the spirit. And he will reveal all the mysteries of this word to us. For they verily, for a few days, chasteneth us their own pleasure. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Did you get that? 
Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight the paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So we get benefit, do we not? Being in the presence of God and let him correct us to where we're put back on the right path. And it says, but let it rather be healed. It says, don't let it be lame, but rather let it be healed. Spiritual healing there. Spiritual healing that we need when we stumble and he corrects us, we go forth. And that's what you can do as well. No matter what you've done in your life, God already knows, but still he stands and waits for you. Do you feel the spirit drawing you? If you do, all you have to do is say, Lord, here am I. Do all the correction that you need. Root out the things in me that don't need to be there. Root them out. Just like you root out the weeds in your garden. Weed out the sin and, and the iniquity in me. Let me stand with my shield. With my body armor. As it calls in Ephesians. To withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. And we can only do that through Jesus and through obedience. It says in the Bible, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because you know, if you're disobedient, you're going to have chastisement. You're going to be chastened. But we correct our own children, at least we should. The Bible says if you don't correct your child, you hate them. Because don't you want what's best for them? Don't you want them to know right from wrong? And do what is right? That's what God wants. He wants you to do what is right in his sight, in his eyes. And we don't understand his ways until we give our life over to him and, and we read this word and we understand his standards and his commandments and he isn't harsh, but he corrects us in love because he's a loving God. He's an awesome God. Let us pray. Lord God, the reading of this word, we know that your word doesn't go out and return unto you void, but does everything that you want it to do. Now, Lord God, we're asking you to feed your sheep, feed your lambs, feed your sheep. Meet the needs of the people, Lord God. Do what is needed and necessary in everyone that's listening, whether it's salvation or healing, or, or maybe they just need to get back on the right path. Maybe they've been disobedient. Lord God, we're asking for you to, to root out the things within us. Lord God, we tend to collect garbage, Father God, so clean out all the garbage from us, Lord God, and pour into us what we have need of from your table, Lord God, to strengthen us on our journey. Because, Lord God, you know what our tomorrow is, because you're already there. Strengthen us for our journey tomorrow, Lord. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. And if you'd like to contact me with a prayer request or a song request or, or whatever, I'd you can contact me. My information's on at the end of the screen. And I want to thank people that's lifted up this ministry in prayer or, or, you know, financially or however you've supported this ministry. And I hope next time, and until next time, rather, I hope that you are blessed.